Hey guys, you know, there's many ways for people to, to get into real estate. You know, the two most popular ones are through a real estate investment trust or a REIT uh, and multifamily syndication. For many of you out there, you may have heard of REITs at some point in your life because it's very similar to a stock and it has uh, some coverage in the news or the media. Uh, a REIT is a company that buys and operates income producing real estate and generates revenue. You know, from there, it pays out dividends to its shareholders in some regular interval, just like a stock would. It's pretty much a same, it's very similar, same sort of thing. A multifamily syndication is when a syndicator pulls money from investors to buy a multifamily building and the entire group shares in the profits generated by the syndication, as well as any appreciation that comes when it's time to sell it. So while both can be considered passive by the investor putting money into each one, uh, the structures and their returns are very different. You know, those differences have their own benefits and, and pitfalls. But, um, you know, and while I may be a little bit biased, uh, we should take a look uh, and take the time to understand what these are. So here's a quick breakdown of the pros and cons of multifamily syndication and, and REITs. So the first is financial barrier to entry. So if we look at multifamily syndication, uh, you know, to get into a multifamily syndication deal, the investor needs to be either qualified ahead of investing uh, as either syndicated or accredited. So what is a sophisticated investor? A sophisticated investor is an investor that is able to evaluate the deal and make an educated decision. You know, to participate in a multifamily syndication, they must know the syndicator. The syndicator must be allowing non-accredited investors into the deal, and the deal must not be advertised. You know, to hit all three of these hurdles, you need to be connected to syndicators in your market. You know, on the other hand, to be an accredited investor, you need to have an annual income of $200,000 by yourself or $300,000 for joint income households for at least two years or have a net worth exceeding $1 million. So in both cases, multifamily syndication, typically you have to have a minimum sort of investment too, right? Uh, for example, depending on the deal size, our typical minimum is, is $50,000, but some can go much higher than that. So if you're looking, um, if we're looking at financial barriers in terms of REITs, you don't need as much money to invest in a REIT. You know, the minimums are, are going to be far less, it, but, uh, and they make you buy purchase, uh, the purchase blocks of shares, right? So if you have a couple of thousand dollars, you can invest in a REIT. You know, this, this makes sense since it works just like a stock, you know, same sort of thing. You're buying shares, you're buying stocks, same thing. You know, based on all that, it's plain to see that the barrier for entry for multifamily syndications is going to be far greater than it is for a REIT. Um, but that's, that's you know, one benefit for the REIT as opposed to the syndication, but let's go on. Access to cash. So when an investor puts money into a syndication deal, the investor will not have access to that principal until there is a refinance or the syndicator sells, and then the cash is returned to the investors. So the intent is to have that initial investment locked in until the end of the projected hold period. So some syndications may have language that allows the investor to sell some shares in the syndication uh, with some written consent from the deal sponsor. But if there's an emergency that comes up and the syndication has this language in the operating agreement that allows them to, to sell, then the investor has a way to get their cash out. So this is very different than a REIT. If you find yourself in need of a cash in, uh, in your, you have, you can, you're in a REIT, you can just sell off shares of that REIT. It usually takes a day or so for the, sun, the funds to settle in the account, but you know it's pretty much there when, when you need it. In conclusion, while a multifamily syndication investment is not liquid, the shares of the REIT can be sold off for easy access to cash. But you have to keep in mind that a REIT typically carries many brokers, fees that facilitate the sale, there's marketing of the REITs and financial partners and consultants and bankers, and all that ends up diluting your return whenever you try to go to sell. So a lot of that stuff gets, gets chipped away too, so keep that in mind. Strong returns. In the case of liquidity, REITs have an advantage, this, but this is where the benefits end. A major benefit of investing in a multifamily syndication is the higher average returns. We do not purchase a multifamily deal unless the average annual return exceeds 15%, and we can return at least 60% of the initial capital with a refinance with no more than five years. 
We're also targeting a minimum of 10% cash on cash return, meaning you would get a 10% cash return on the cash you're putting into the deal. Keep in mind that these are bare minimums. We push to exceed these baselines. While the ability to refinance and return the initial equity is one of the most powerful aspects of multifamily syndications. That's, that's, that's one of the biggest things with this. We get to use leverage too. The reason why so many people invest in real estate is for that return. The one thing that a well-run syndication like ours focuses on is hitting our return targets quarter over quarter. But in comparison, according to Narrate, in 2017, the REIT industry generated returns of about 9.27% across all U.S. REITs indices. This is very close to the long-term average from 1972 up until 2017. The total return averaged about 9.72% per year. This means that REITs are very, very consistent. Now, for some investors that like stocks and they like that consistency, this works well for them. Then you have ownership. When you're investing in a multifamily syndication, you have direct ownership underneath that underlying property, meaning the most sophisticated, most significant benefit of of direct ownership is that you get to see the actual property you're investing in. And as the syndicator follows the business plan and forces the appreciation and makes the improvements and increases the rent, you'll get updates on a regular basis to, and see what's happening in terms of the occupancy, the rent, improvements, uh, anything else related with that property that you're, you're involved with. You know, another added benefit is that if you want to reach out to the syndicator and ask them about the property or what's going on, you have access to them. You don't need to call into a call center and maybe maybe get uh, get rolled around in, in the in the IVR. And the, uh, you also have tax deferred status. From a tax perspective, both REITs and multifamily syndications will pass the depreciation benefits through to the investor. However, when you invest in a syndication deal, you have a whole bunch of new options available to you to help defer taxes. So you can compound 100% of the gains for years, as long as you don't distribute the gains outside of that syndication. So as an investor, you can continue rolling that cash into more and more deals that the syndicator is offering. So you make a lot of money in one deal, roll it into the next one, you can keep on doing it forever if you want. In a REIT, once you cash out, you're taxed on those capital gains. Again, it's like a stock. Then you have high returns without any investor risk, liability, or credit risk. So when you're investing with an experienced multifamily syndicator, you add another layer of protection between you as an investor and liability resulting from the managers as well as any legal or debt obligations. So in a syndication, there is usually two sides of uh, the operating agreement. There's a general partnership, which has the managing partners who are responsible for the decisions of the property. And then you have the investor partners, which there are the investors bringing the money to the table. The operating agreement will state that under no circumstances will the investors, uh, shown uh, as uh, the investor partners, be responsible for anything that the managers are doing. So in terms of operational decisions, right? If there is a major problem and end up being end up going to court, the judge can't find the partners, the investor partners, liable for any decisions that were made by the general partners over here. So this allows the investor to be completely removed from any lawsuits that may arise as a result of either operational or management activities or negligence or whatever else might be going on in that property. So it's a good layer of protection for, for that investor. So the risk associated with syndication has a lot to do with the experience of the syndicator, the property manager, and the team backing them up. So in our case, uh, I have partners and managers that have invested in or either managed in excess of 3,000 plus units. So it seems to me that um, if you can qualify as a qualified investor and you're willing to invest your capital for five to 10 years, putting your money into a multifamily syndication with someone that knows what they're doing is the superior strategy. If you're not into the real estate uh, game and you want some more liquidity and you want to have the same sort of look and feel as a stock, maybe REITs are better for you. So anyway, what do you guys think? Are you good with investing for a high return in, in, a, real, in a real asset? Or do you like having like a stock-like REIT? Let me know. Leave a comment. And uh, you know, like always, if this video provides any value to you, please go ahead and share. appreciate it. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good one.